you know when people just love as an ingredient that was used to make something? Yeah, I never really understood what that meant until I watched The Fall Die, and then I still don't get it, but I think this is the closest movie to really understanding what that means. So it came out May 3rd with uh, Ryan Dawson and Emily Blunt as the leads. Uh, Ryan Dawson plays Colt Seavers, the stuntman, and then Jody plays, no, Emily Blunt plays Jody, uh, Ryan Dawson's girlfriend in the movie. And it's basically about a stuntman who gets injured, and about like a year plus later, he's called back on set to find his actress double because he's going to be in his girlfriend's upcoming movie. It's a simple enough premise, but I think they weave a lot more into the story than the premise entails. And like it says a lot, it says little because it can't really spoil it for the audience as well. It's a blend of comedy, action, and drama. And I think it does a good job like balancing all three parts of them. And I just saw like two days ago or yesterday that it was basically a box office bomb. It did not break even at all. And it had like a budget of about $125 million plus. And just for reference, that is a lot. Just for reference, um, in 2008, Iron Man had a budget of like $130 to $140, like million dollars uh, as their budget. So it's a lot, but you can definitely see why it was really high. Like they use a lot of special effects and also for the stunts that happen in the movie, it's no surprise why it had such a high budget. But uh, I still don't think it deserves to like bomb at the box office. Like it only made $177 million in profit, which is a lot, but not enough to break even for the budget. And uh, I think it doesn't really deserve that. I think it's still like good enough, like a good, if not decent movie, especially if you like funny movies with like good acting and chemistry and um, a pretty decent plot as well in the story. So first thing, I'm gonna start off with the positives and that is a runtime. It's like two hours and seven minutes long. So it flies by pretty quickly and you don't have to sit there trying to understand every single thing just for it to be trash. Like it doesn't, it's not three hours long. It's like a, a pretty decent, it's an average movie length and it's easy to like i think it's re relatively easy to understand the plot and i didn't really see any issues with the pacing in the movie as well secondly the acting the chemistry between emily blunt and ryan Gosling were just like off the charts it's like insane and they really do a good job of playing this like natural awkward funny couple and i've not really seen it ever except for like the office i guess as a tv show and and for emily blunt we already know she's a good actress so we don't really need to bring it up again but this does show her, like, this does show me a lot more range that she has because I've only seen her in, like, three, four other projects, A Quiet Place, Oppenheimer, and then Edge of Tomorrow. And those were all kind of serious roles, so it definitely shows that she can play comedic characters if she wanted to. And as for Ryan Gosling, he, he does the comedic character really well. Like, I've seen him in Barbie, uh, The Nice Guys, and then maybe Crazy Stupid Love as well. So he can, he can definitely play comedic characters really well, but he also shows his range in this, like, Ironically, this is the second time as a stuntman, I think, in a movie uh, from 2011's Drive. So he used to be a stuntman in a serious movie that came out in 2011, and that was a lot more serious than this one. So it definitely shows the range that he has. And he does a great job at playing like an awkward, funny character as well. And again, every supporting character did a great job. Like, I don't think anyone was like bad in uh, acting performance. Like, it was everyone held their own, basically. All right, so story-wise, Colt, uh, and Jody were together before the accident and after he recovered he never replied or sent a message he basically just abandoned her and then they broke up and he just sort of abandoned her because he didn't really know what to say and he, he was basically feeling insecure and not worthy of her because she was moving up the ranks and stuff and then later on in the movie she's promoted to director or well before the movie after the time skip she's promoted to director and for the movie that she is about to direct Metal Storm it's basically just a retelling of the breakup between Jody and Colt. And it's like that also allows for like comedic moments in the movie, but it also allows for the writers to like put in a decent story inside the comedy already and uh, the action scenes and it balances all of them pretty well. And it also allows for some emotional mo uh, moments throughout the movie. And that's up on my positives where the visuals, it was visually stunning. I don't know, this could just be the color grading or I might just be tripping or seeing things, but like I think I thought it was like pretty clear the quality was pretty crisp in my opinion. I also enjoyed the cinematography and like the choice of different shots. For example, there's a part in the movie where Jody is talking to Colt about like the use of split screen in her upcoming movie. And then the actual movie starts to use split screen as well. And it just kind of enhances the experience. And then they start to mirror their movements with each other as well. The editing definitely makes it a lot more funny. Like I, some of the jokes may not have landed if the editing didn't help with it. For example, there's a part where you know he's 
he's investigating where his actor's double is and he finds his first lead at his house and then it leads him, it leads him to a party and then at the party he gets drugged and then later he starts to see uh, unicorns and that just kind of enhances the scenes with the unicorns it kind of makes it more funny otherwise it would just be kind of plain so they have like they make good decisions adding in different things to aid like the visual element and again i think this movie is something that's like a lot more funny if you were to watch it with like a group of people versus just like one person and even then it's still kind of like it's decently funny so the comedy is another strength of this movie in my opinion and then finally the fight choreography and action scenes were also really well done like i would say the only thing is that there were some moments that were kind of like unrealistic but um otherwise i think the choreography was really well done and again this movie is like about stunts people, like stunts men and stunts women in the action in the action industry. I'm pretty sure. So it kind of just shows how much work goes into it. And I think there's an Oscar, there's a new Oscar category being made um, to award like stunts men in the film and like TV industry now. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, I think that's all. That's I think all I have about the positives. So like the comedy, the acting, the chemistry, the visuals. Um, there are a lot of reasons, in my opinion, to see this movie. The only thing I just said that's like a con or like a disadvantage or not disadvantage, but like the only bad thing about this movie is it is a, a little bit unrealistic at times, I think. And they, they are dealing with actual mercenaries in the movie with like actual real life weapons and guns. And it's a little bit surprising how uh, the main character survives all of these or some of the explosions or whatever. But otherwise, I think everything else was great. And it's like it's like an average movie to go see if you have the money for it with friends especially as well. So um, yeah, I, th I think you should watch it. That's it. Leave a comment down below what you thought. Uh, Peace.